We're now in the second day of the month of Adar, and the Gemara tells us, tells the Jewish people, that uh, from the time that Adar enters, we are to increase in our joy. And uh, globally, if you look at the situation in the world, it's very hard to understand how we are to, and why we are to, just simply increase in joy, simply because of the of a coming of a new month. Um, and how does this um, directive affect us? How should it affect us? And uh, how can it affect us? And the answer is simply, this is just a, a good sound advice from the Gemara uh, based on a certain mazel, a certain soul, a certain source, um, like a spiritual source that shines powerfully. It's the, according to the Kabbalah, I think, it's the, it's the mazel, the, 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 the sign is of fish. And fish are seen as, um, as a sign of blessing. They multi- We always bless each other. We should multiply like fish. And um, some people believe that. So they can come back and they're... they're Clothed in the in the bodies of fish, and um, it's the month, of course, when we we averted uh, national annihilation in the story of Perm. It was um, Haman, the the wicked, sought to destroy the entirety of the Jewish people that were under the rule of Achashverosh, who ruled literally from uh, India to Ethiopia, but not the short way, the long way, according to the opinion of the Gemara. And uh, Haman had actually got him to sign an edict that would annihilate every single Jewish man, woman, and child. And it wasn't for the um, resolve of Mordechai, the leader of the generation, Ishihudi, he's called the, the Jewish man, who assembled uh, Jewish children in, in public places and had them learn Torah. And um, God, and, and they also Esther declared a three-day fast around Pesach time. And when God saw that the Jewish people really hadn't forgotten and really actually uh, wanted to take upon themselves the, uh, the Torah, it says that, uh, that the Jews at the time of uh, the giving of the, t- the time of um, Purim had taken upon themselves willfully that which they had started to do at the time of the giving of the Torah. So when we got the Torah, as Medrashat explains, that Hashem actually held like a mountain over our head. And he said, if you accept my Torah, good. And if not, this will become your grave. So it was a little, a little coercion going on there. And the Jews accepted, but then it was only by Purim time that literally their life was on the line that God saw that they were willing to, to sacrifice their lives to, to upkeep His Torah. And and this merit, he saved the entirety of the Jewish people. So in honor of this, uh, and 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 this month also is connected with Moshe Rabbeinu. It says that uh, when uh, Haman was trying to pick a month to kill the Jewish people, he wanted to find their most unfortunate month. So he saw nothing special happened in other. This is before obviously the Purim miracle, and he saw not only nothing special, but Moshe Rabbeinu, the leader, the first leader of the, of the Jewish people, was was killed. No, was killed. Died on the seventh day of other. So the Gemara notes that um, he didn't see that actually this was also his birthday, and his birthday atoned for his day of death. And um, it, because of this, the Jews are commanded that when the month of other comes in, we should rejoice. And this rejoicing is um, is practical advice, and it's to prepare us not only to be in a good mindset for the entire month of other, like it says that joy breaks through boundaries. Whenever you find yourself in a, a situation of um, of constraint, of personal um, strife of dilemma is you simply if you're happy if you force yourself to take a happy mentality you'll find that the boundaries of this perceived uh, problem will melt away and you'll be able to really overcome them because now you're happy you know happy person is a productive person someone who's who's moving forward someone who's progressing someone who's advancing happy person knows much less boundaries much less limitations than someone who's just blah or even depressed god forbid um so there's that, and also it's a big preparation for for Pesach. Pesach is the really the defining moment in our nation's history, and Pesach every year, like every single Jewish holiday, it's not just a remembrance of what was, but according to the Rebbe, anyway, the, the same spiritual energies that were in the universe on the day of the first occurrence of this of this event, Pesach, Purim, Hanukkah, Sukkot, and Shavuos, uh, Shavuos, they are still in the universe, and not only that, because we have a, a concept of um, of um, we go up in holiness, the forces are even stronger every year. And if you're able to tap into them, you're able to get the same revelations that were there not only the first time, but even now, you know, a few thousand years later, depending on the holiday. So, um, so Pesach is, is, is to, to properly, Pesach, the whole concept of Pesach is, is you're able to experience, you prepare properly, great spiritual leaps and bounds in your service of God. There's things that, it says by, um, it's in the, the stories of the Rebbeim by the by the 
stay there when they go ask for by um, opening the door for Elia Novi it's known as, as a time you can ask for certain things and there have been the previous rabbi and he writes in his diary he'd always ask for spiritual things this is the most opportune time and, and the whole concept of Pesach is Pesach can also mean jumping over and what are you jumping over? you're jumping over spiritual obstacles that were in your way the whole year and Pesach, that's why Nisan is considered that the month of Pesach is the first month of the year and other is the last month of the year because it's really the start of the year. Even though Rosh Hashanah is called the head of the year, but it falls in the seventh month. The first month, the thing that defines us as a nation is this idea of Pesach, of liberation from, from human bondage and to be taken in by God himself and to be slaves just to God alone by observing and upkeeping his holy Torah, his will and wisdom as it, is, uh, as it transmigrates down into this lowest, gross physical world. So all this is, how do you prepare for such a thing? To, to make spiritual advances only through happiness. The Breslover, who lived uh, in the late 1700s until 1810, said in Edict, it's a big mitzvah to be happy always. And uh, this is something that Hasidim tried to live with today. And um, this is something he wanted to affect us the whole year. But even if you don't follow that path of Hasidim, which used to be called Efreilech, the happy ones, when they first came out, if you don't follow that path, you, you should know that by... Um, by um, Purim, by other time, that this month you have a mitzvah to be happy. So I invite everyone to do things that make you happy, to engender thoughts of happiness, and to do things that you enjoy as hobbies, and things that, you know, obviously learning Torah should bring you happiness, and davening, but even if it's other things, just so you can get into the proper mindset to be happy, and to be properly prepared, not only for Purim, but also for Pesach. And this way, it's just that uh, simple part together, like we said, um, Happiness breaks through boundaries, and we will to break through the ultimate boundary of, of this exile, and we'll be able to finally engender on this planet for the first time a time of world peace and the time of uh, an end of economic global disparity amongst all of God's uh, God's human beings. Thank you so much, and uh, God bless.